I hate dumb cliches, and the very worst is it always gets better, because no matter how true that is or isn't, the sort of person you're telling it to isn't actually going to be helped by it, it almost feels like you're trying to fob off your responsibility by saying it, and when you are in a dark place like that, it might be useful to hear something more real. And so, today let's talk about the actual darkest times in life, and also let's talk about my experiences with them. It's something that is intuitively very hard for me, but hopefully it's useful to someone who is hearing this to actually get some real talk, and not just fun dumb cliches because although life does get better there are lots of ups in life statistically you're not at the very worst point in your entire life also that means that it's going to get worse at other points too and so I think it's not a very useful metaphor and instead it's worth maybe taking a step back and thinking about why it is that this tends to happen why why life is this way because I would personally say that the ups and down of life are what makes the ups so good you cannot have ups without downs and in the same way that fish have no idea what water is because they spend all day around it. Trees don't know what a forest is, besides maybe the trees at the edge of the forest. You don't know what your best times are until you have your worst. It's kind of like being sick and all you want in the world is to be healthy again, but as soon as you're healthy you don't go, yes, thank god I don't have the sniffles or whatever it is. You just assume that is the new state of being. This is kind of one of the prerequisites of life and one of the ways that you might argue you can be sick is depression. Whether you talk about clinical depression or depression the, you know, kind of condition or depression the mood, honestly the three things blur together a lot when you talk about it, uh, but this is something that I think I first really experienced when I was a teenager, and I think that is a very common experience. Like, somewhere around 13, I just remember everything starting to suck, everything feeling really negative, despite it being the same stuff that was happening before. Obviously, I could go through the motions and keep life going, but I was really questioning at the end of each day, like, why? And just, I don't know, spending more time just with my face planted down on a bed. I, I, I went through a lot of weird and terrible things as a result of this, and honestly, Honestly, it's hard to know what the solution even is, especially the first few times you're kind of dealing with it. I, I don't know if this is a standard experience through life, but I think that this is something that you're going to go through many, many times if this is something uh, you're first coming into. And rather than saying like, oh god, yeah, if you think this is bad, wait till you have this next bad moment, I think it's more important to say, yeah, this is one of the things about being a real person in the world, is you have to work out how to regulate yourself emotionally. I used to be terrified of the concept of becoming an adult, not for those reasons and all of the other things that you have to do as an adult, but honestly just the idea of like, yeah, when you're an adult you're fully responsible for like paying bills and there's a job you have to go to every day and if you don't do that second one then you can't do the first one and lots of angry people come after you. It just seemed terrifying to me the very concept of being an adult. I had a pact with myself, a, 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 you know, a very bad pact that I, I just wouldn't deal with that adult stuff. I would make sure I'd sorted things out before then and this was the only way I could like have any comfort as a teenager is like, oh, yeah, all of these scary things about being an adult, they're not problems for me. I'm, I'm not gonna uh, be at that point. And that is something which isn't very healthy. I think it, yeah, there's a lot of things that people say, like, oh, it's not healthy too, but at the time they seem really, really smart. Like, oh, yeah, well, it's not healthy, but it's solving my problem. Uh, this can be anything from, I don't know, I had friends who got really into cigarettes. I think that's wild. Like, it, na nowadays it's even more so, but, like, as a teenager and having, like, years of, like, taught into you, like, how bad smoking is, but more importantly, seeing the price of cigarettes and thinking, yeah, these things that slowly kill me, uh, and by the way, taste the way that cigarettes do, it's terrible, I'm gonna get into these, I, I think that's well, but at the same time, everyone kind of picks something like that to deal with bad things, so uh, that might be uh, like having negative thought spirals like uh, I was doing, or maybe that might even be something along the lines of taking control of your life. If there's so much happening that you're not in control of, what if there was a way you could be in control of this? This kind of like uh, logic of like, well, I'm in a lot of pain uh, that I can't control right now, and so I might as well be in some pain I can control, is something I still don't fully grasp. And I want to be clear, like, if you are, if this is a scary topic for you or something you don't want to hear, this is the time to leave this video. Um, I do, I, I think this might not be for you. I think there's a lot of uh, very happy, fun topics I'd love to discuss in this series, but I would like to start off something very serious and say, yeah, being in control of pain that is happening to you is something that a lot of people choose to do, and also also seems like a really good solution on the surface, but also only gets you so far because it's a, it's the weird thing about how brains work. Maybe you could see this as like the 
the uh, I, I know the, the even more negative version of the fact that when people are stuck in a room and they're uh, bored, a lot of people will just choose to electrocute themselves. Because if you're going to be bored anyway, you might as well be bored and in pain. But it's the I I think the real truth of it is that a lot of people uh, don't re realize that negative emotions are can be powerful too. And in the same way that uh, my, my one of my favorite quotes is that the opposite of love is not hate. People picture that it is like yeah the the most you can like someone is love. And the most you can dislike someone is hate, and that makes the two opposites. But really, it's two sides of the same coins. You're focusing on them, you're obsessing over them. A lot of people will even get those two things mixed up. Like, it's the, the classic schoolboy thing of like, oh yeah, I like this girl, so I'm going to be mean to her. <laughs> you know, like, that happens basically because of that weird mixing up. A lot of people that you think you hate, uh, whether it be in your real life or even, honestly, internet figures. I wish I'd realized this uh, earlier. A lot of people you think you hate because they're just so annoying, it's actually that you like them, but there's some weird part about them uh, that you really, really despise. I still have this to this day where I, you know, like, there'll be a channel that I'm like, oh, I really hate the way uh, this person or you know, does the thing that they do, but really it's saying, like, yeah, they're really close to you in a lot of ways, but there's this one way that you just find to be uh, irritating, or that you just find to be hard, or that you just find to be so different that you can't work out. Seeing problem, you know, like, having to look at a problem and saying that you don't know the solution is scary. Saying you know the solution and it's that it's all dumb and no one else has worked it out isn't. And that is how I kind of felt about the fear of adulthood, the fear of being alive in some ways. It's like, yeah, it's actually not that I don't know the solution to this. It's that everyone else is stupid for thinking that being alive is a good thing. Uh, those idiots. It's basically where I came down on it. And so that is... Uh, a dangerous logic path to take yourself down, and that is why I uh, you kind of want to share it from my perspective because I think like there is a very logical way that you know lo lo I think uh, uh, as a fun phrase here when you I I'm someone who would describe themselves as like yeah I try to look through things logically rather than uh, a lot of people act exclusively with their emotions and I try to be someone who doesn't do that because it's so frustrating when there's like something happening and someone's just totally ignoring it to have some emotional crisis I remember I uh I, I asked like uh oh yeah so like uh this this thing here like this is Definitely one of your cats to one of my child miners at one point. Like she had a she had a big um, door uh, like pillow. I don't want the phrase for that. It's like a doorstop, but it was like it looked like one of her cats. And I was like, is this like modeled after your cat or what? And she's like, and she just starts crying and being like, ah, are you saying that my cat's dead? I'm like, no, no, no. I'm just asking why you have this. And then she would like deflect the question that way. Using emotions to deflect questions, using emotions to avoid things you don't want to do is a very powerful thing that lots of people have. And uh, it's something that I've never really enjoyed. Like I want to expand the knowledge in my head and so I won't deflect things like that and so one of the questions of like so how do you get through something bad that's happening uh the you know like trying to deal with it logically is quite hard like well I mean uh you know like is it you can almost like say like yeah it's not actually that bad like everyone goes through it at some point but that doesn't actually reflect how you're feeling the thing that I think I learned somewhere in my life is that feelings are reelings and uh, you know even though you can tell yourself they're not important they are, they are always going to be a factor that you're not considering and uh, just for, for a, a fun uh, dumb story here to maybe help you out about like uh, something that I, I'm sure someone else has gone through that might help you realize that uh, why it is important to uh, maybe have people around you that care about you, but also that you can trust and care about you, etc. Is that I remember at one point I, um, I I I don't know who happened or who to if it was a friend or but anyway I, I I have theories. But I at one point had a school person like come and take me out of a class, and I was like, ooh, what have I done? I I usually am like quite familiar. Like I've uh, <laughs> during my like uh, again teenage years, there were quite a few moments like this. Like oh yeah, I've done something really minor here. Right? I I did a surprising number of things that. I think could probably get you kicked out of school, but I did them in just the right way where it didn't. But um, one, of, one of those things was uh, the, the school person just came in and they sat me down and had a very serious talk, but like one where they're like, are you okay, Andrew? And I was like, yeah, thank you for asking. You know, how, how are you doing? That, that, that sort of stuff. And they're like, no, no, are you are you like emotionally okay? And I was like, yeah, I, I, I wonder why you're asking. It's weird to bring me out of a class for this. Like uh, in, in retrospect, I, I feel like looking back, I should have been thinking like, ooh, has something bad happened to someone elsewhere? But they're like, I got a message from someone with some chat locks 
that show that you have been seriously considering, uh, I don't know, like uh, unaliving yourself, maybe is the is the, uh, the the fun way you say that now. But uh, they they've been uh, that you that you've been considering that, and I just uh, I just want to dive into this a little deeper. And I remember just thinking, like, man, what I don't remember having that chat with someone, but why why would they share it? Why would they think? that the school is the appropriate people to talk to about this. And so they, they put me, they, they took me out of classes quite regularly, like once a week. I, I lost a lot of education, which is supposedly the point of a school. Uh, so we could just have a chat like, a, uh, it was with a, a fairly senior person at the school about like, so what is, you know, like, let's, let's talk about what's going on. Where she tried to like trick me into saying like, uh, you know, stuff that would make, make it seem like I was bad. Like, oh yeah, do you ever like feel like you just want to like jump off a building? And I was like, no, not really. But she was like, yeah, but if you could like fly to the ground, would you? And I was like, yeah, that'd be really cool, actually. And then, like, that was some proof to her. Like, uh, clearly he has a strong uh, suicidal ideation. If he's, uh, you know, if he... Ima you know, she literally admitted it about herself, but she got me to say through that. So it, was, it took, like, a long, long time of it. And I remember at one point in the process, uh, she had to call to my home and, like, contact uh, my mother. It was one of my, like, big rules in school is like yeah it doesn't matter what happens but if there's a phone home that's that's when you're in trouble you know like uh you you know keep keep stuff up in school but if it if it gets so bad that the school has to phone my parents like oh it's gonna be well my mother a uh, single mother there uh it's gonna be bad and i remember when my mother told me about it she was just embarrassed about it she was just like that was that was the clear thing is like she'd heard uh, about some things she found some some <laughs> some knife somewhere or something she's like you know it just it, why are you doing this? It was the, the whole like we had a long conversation and the point of it was almost that she was just embarrassed That this had come to light too and that was basically my response as well The whole thing about all of that was I lost a lot of education. I lost a lot of trust uh, Because I told something someone the wrong thing at the wrong time And I think that that is why having people you can trust and tell things to is important Like someone who knows when you are actually at a point where you really need some help and someone who knows when they can do something that can really mess you up. I've I've heard stories like this all over the place. And just for a minor, another example of this, by the way, I I, I want to share a, a a dumb story that happened while I was in uh, same same school. I was doing this rare business course thing. It was like a pilot program across the UK. It was being funded by some private like company. I I think they might have been accountants or something. But they were funding a business course where we spent all day learn all, all day for a whole year, like uh, every. Thursday or Wednesday, I think it was, um, for every, I think it was two years even, two, two whole years of a full day every day, um, just learning about businesses and going to businesses and all, all this sort of stuff. And it was, uh, I, I really liked business as a class. I was always running businesses long before it was a subject in school. And I actually, I, I valued learning about a lot of these things. But, uh, I remember somewhere near the very end of this course, I, I, I felt like I was doing pretty well and it. it was a lot of, uh, so many, ass like, assignments. Like, it was like over a hundred pieces of 100 documents across the years but um at near the very end of this someone came in to like observe the classroom and i just assumed it was like a school observer from like uh, ofsted or some like body that would examine schools uh and so i just spoke to them a bunch about like they asked like how are you enjoying this course i was like honestly i don't enjoy school it's uh it's all pointless i'm just here uh, because I have to be here and <laughs> like, you know, I, I spoke to them in a real way Like I actually told them the truth I think if you asked any student they wouldn't say that but they would more or less be thinking it right It is a very normal thing amongst teenagers to be finding school to be troublesome and only really going there because of you know Some qualification or their parents or something along those lines And so uh, yeah, I, the, the reason I mentioned that is because uh, nothing really happened after a while like uh, the, the person went away They said oh, this is interesting and you know, wrote some notes and went away. And then after a few weeks, what happened was, is uh, I had a very interesting uh, kind of conversation with my teacher, who was like, oh yeah, by the way, Andrew, uh, you, we, we had a cut that a few weeks ago, you might recall, we had these people in. They are the people who are financially backing this course. This is the UK. I have no idea why there's a private edge. I have no idea why there are some people involved in this. But uh, these are the people who are financially backing this, and they uh, they were really offended by the you know, the way that you described this course and the fact that you didn't really want to be here, and so they have kicked you off it. And I was like, yeah, but that's you know like not really, right? And he's like, no, yeah, that has actually happened. Uh, it was a really I, I I didn't think that was a thing you could do go through two years of work and not get anything for it. Uh, but yeah, because it was a brand new type of qualification, they decided they didn't want me. On it and so I wasn't allowed to be there which you know wasn't the biggest of deals it was two years of my life wasted but the real big deal you know the one that got me at the time I think looking back I should care more about this qualification but the thing that really got me is they waited weeks to deliver this decision so I did 
a bunch of extra work for nothing. It, it equated to zero degrees on my, or zero uh, qualifications, GCSEs or whatever. Um, I spent hours of my life working towards something pointless because someone didn't want to tell me on time. But even worse, the much, much, much worse thing to take from this is the fact that they, uh, you know, they told me about three days before we were due to go on a trip to, because uh, we'd been doing business trips. It was a kind of fun thing about the course. We actually learned about real world businesses. It was a real business course, I thought. It was meant to teach me about the world because I wanted to do businesses. It was something I really enjoyed doing as a teenager. I am very money motivated. I've said many times. Um, so I really enjoyed this course because we go to real businesses and learn. And the last course of the last year uh, was a Fort Park trip. It very we weren't we were gonna have like one business meeting at 12 30 and we were just gonna enjoy the theme park for the rest of the day it was gonna be really cool and i was looking forward to it and they said oh well you've been kicked off the course so you know that fort park trick this week you can't come by the way and i thought that was the most ridiculously petty and vindictive thing someone has ever done Rem I, I think in you know like uh removing the uh, access to a theme park trip in reality like looking back like sure i guess if they're the ones funding the trip because i think you know like obviously school trips cost the school money as well as the pupils like okay yeah they can decide like yeah you can't go on this trip because we don't like your jive i don't agree with it but i kind of get it but the messed up thing is that some woman came into the school and because of my answers not matching what she wanted to hear decided to take away two years worth of my work and you know when you're a child you have no idea that there's meant to be right and wrong and there's like maybe someone you should speak to about this you just think oh someone has done this to me so that is the way things must be done and so i just had to accept it that's very much what I did and honestly uh, a part of me has taken a lesson from this which is like yeah there is a, I guess a lesson in respect you could say somewhat like you do need to tell people what they want to hear sometimes it's a weird thing about how power works that's what this uh, woman kind of taught me that like oh yeah when there are people in positions of power no you, you at, at some point you have to decide when uh, you know like their power over you uh, is within their judgment to use whenever they feel like and so you got to know when to tell people what they want to hear versus telling them the truth. Um, but I think a way more important lesson to learn from both of these things, because the uh, the women from the school that, like, I don't know, heard something and, uh, like, she she personally took me aboard to, like, talk to me about, like, you know, like, oh, oh every week, let's have a catch-up, see how you're doing uh, with your stuff, Andrew, the one who tried to talk me into saying I wanted to jump off a building uh, so that she could uh, have a conversation. Uh, she said we'd do it every week, and after five weeks, she just randomly uh, never spoke to me. She never, like, called me in again, wouldn't, like, uh, entertain it. And so what I learned from both these interactions is that a lot of, um, like at the time I took it as like some adults are really, really wild. Like I, I do agree with this to this day. There are people who really enjoy power and they don't care what the context is for that power. If it's a church, if it's, a, if it's politics, if it's going into, uh, you know, like some petty moderator drama line. They love the idea of power so much. The idea that they could wield over people, other people at their own discretion when they feel like it. That they're willing to make some people suffer just because they go against the, the model of the world which they agree with. This is kind of scary to really think about, but it is uh, kind of true. And I, I, I just thought that there was a whole class of adult who were petty and vindictive and who thought that like, yeah, well, I suffered at some point in my life, so really you should suffer too. And I do think that is true. There's a whole type of person like that. But I think the much bigger thing to take away from it is the fact that, uh, you know, to try and see the best in this person who ruined years of my life, to see the best in this person who, you know, like took me hours, hours of my lesson and, you know, had me a, a, a real disappointed conversation with my mother where I just felt like I was, you know, I felt like by, you know, not wanting to be alive, I had done something wrong. I think the real thing to take away from that is that people want to help you. Um, you know, like in reality, the, the woman who like forgot about me, like, you know, she was really concerned at that moment, but at some other point, there were some more pressing issues. And so she focused on those like, oh yeah. And you know, the woman who decided to, you know, like uh, make that, a uh, big impression. She figured that she could teach the value of consequences to me because she clearly thought if I was able to tell the truth about this to her, that I'd been doing it to lots of people and been devaluing her course. And so if she just taught me a valuable lesson, I I I'm sure that's what these people were thinking at the time. And that's where I learned that humans are cooperative as a species. People who think that people are out to get you, it's very rare. Some people... Uh, will steal. Some people do bad things, but it's always a tiny minority of the population. The overwhelming majority of human beings do want to help you, but here's the problem. The definition of help varies so much from person to person, 
And this is a big problem because, it, you know, helping, especially when you're a teenager and your sense of time is, uh, you know, like, again, I literally did not imagine a world where I was going to be an adult. So the idea of someone helping me as an adult was someone saying, I'm not going to help you. The idea of someone saying, this lesson that you'll get right now will really be useful in years. It's just someone saying, screw you, I'm hurting you, and here's my justification. But I think that almost everyone wants to help you. Even the person who, I don't know, like, reported the thing. Even my, you know, like, I don't know, friends who have betrayed me. I'm sure at some point these people thought they were doing something good. and that, But they were doing something for a different goal. Like, um, you can really help someone getting a job by being really mean to them. You can help someone, um, you know, you can really help someone in the short term by giving them money. But really screw over their long term prospects of actually learning to look after themselves. And all these other various examples. I think people really are trying to help each other all of the time. I think that we have just gotten to the point where, I, I think in life though, when someone is trying to help you with something you don't want to achieve, they can genuinely do more. Oh, interesting. Uh, that, I think that <laughs> that was an unexpected lag right there. Um, but when someone is uh, trying to help you, they can do more harm than good. And so I would say trust is important. When do you disclose the things that you need help with? That is a valuable lesson to learn. Maybe it's the wrong thing to take from all of this. But yeah, I had a... Um, I had a substantial portion of my life uh, set back at one point in my... Uh, thankfully, I recovered from it. And uh, I just want to say, you know, uh, to that, to the woman who runs the course, the, the YA course uh, in, the, uh, in the Bedfordshire region, I want to mention to you right now, if you're still alive, hope you're not, but uh, you know, it's, <laughs> I'm sure you're doing well. I'm sure you're doing wonderfully. I'm, I'm happy to hear about you soon. But I'd just like to know uh, that of all the people on that course, of all the people on that experimental course, the one you kicked off is the one who probably, uh, the only one of the batch who is actually running a business. And I imagine, hopefully, the most successful business on the course. So yeah, how about that? Thank you to all of you who watched this video so that I could have that one point of pride of uh, um, the people who ran that course and the, <laughs> the person who uh, did not like the truth that much. And I hope you all understand the, at least the part uh, maybe my origin story, the backstory of why I believe speaking truth is so important. I think speaking truth to power is the way some people put it sometimes, but that seems a bit grandiose. I think telling people about the world as you actually see it is so important because there are people who actively will try to silence you for your opinions on it. This is not good. This is not okay, but it does happen. And I just want to say uh, that if there's one thing to take from this video, it is that I believe in honesty to a level where I have genuinely harmed my own chances in lots of places because I think that of everything else in life uh, your lies will only last for a certain amount of time but the truth is genuinely forever anyway thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one I, I think I'll do a third let's play in this fun little old style series so I'll see you probably next week for that one uh, I, I've enjoyed this a lot if you have to I don't know like it and let me know Make the channel very slightly more successful. Consider becoming a channel member uh, to access some exclusive content. Uh, because look at me. Look, I run a business. I, I, I work out the sales funnel that some number of people would be interested in seeing that additional content that the average viewer wouldn't. And so by charging a paywall, I am able to uh, you know, earn more money to be able to do this as a job. Something uh, which I did not learn at all from my, <laughs> from my course. So yeah, I'm glad. Glad I didn't finish it. I'd be terribly qualified anyway. Okay, thank you for watching. Goodbye.